I am so blessed to have this opportunity to interview Alexis Pobletti. Unfortunately, we tried to do the Facebook Live thing and it was like, connection failed, connection failed as life does. So we decided to do this way, which I think is a guaranteed way, unless the electricity goes up, but it'll be fine. So Alexis, mother of a 15 year old son, 20 year old daughter, entrepreneur for the past 15 years, so if her son is 15, she started 15 years ago. I mean, she has been, I think, a veteran of being a full-time worker plus doing the entrepreneur route, married for 23 years. And I thought this was interesting. Age 40, you earn your bachelor's degree in public mm -hmm. health, healthcare administration. And I think a lot of adults do their work thing and then go back 30, 40, 50, because we just want right to pursue other um, adventures in life. And then currently full-time worker with a large healthcare company while she does her entrepreneur business and she does virtual coffee chats with women entrepreneurs. I love how she has time for music, hula, karaoke, and helping women. I love this, take action and renew their dreams. I think many times as moms, when we raise kids, we think we have to give up our dreams. Yeah. But I love how your mission is to renew our, our dreams as moms, as women. So take it away. What do you think? Um, I love your words of wisdom. I've talked to her off camera. So now you guys get to learn <laughs> how it, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so thank you for having me on here. Karen, um, you know, uh, I feel like I've known you forever, though I've only, I, I only actually had a coffee chat with you a month, at the beginning of June, mm -hmm. and we really hit it off, and um, I believe the way we think about parenting, the way we raise our children, the, our work ethic, you know, we're all in alignment with, uh, with that, and also being open and willing to get input from others um, that are on this journey with us because it takes a village to raise children. Um, my way is not the only way. The way my parents raised us is not the only way. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's great that you are a parenting coach because we really needed that like uh, back when I was little. <laughs> uh, my parents did the best they could and, you know, you kind of have to, navigate as an adult um, any of the cultural uh, or environmental uh, you know but limiting beliefs that you pick up along the way and we all have that um, but again it's great to have a coach like yourself to be able to have a space where we can come and kind of talk about you know I'm not doing well in this area not doing well in this area but you know um, to, to claim the victories our kids are still alive like even the basic I can get food in my kid and they're still alive. I can get them to school on time. You know, sometimes we forget it's some of these little things are victories. Not everybody is up to the challenge of, of really investing the time and the energy to raise a child and to really be there and support them on their journey because they have a separate journey than us. And we forget they're little human beings. <laughs> they are not us. And and to be able to separate that and say, hey, you know what? God gave me this child and I need to be a good steward of this blessing. Um, and to even shift that whole mindset that it's what they do is what they do. Even if they fail, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't affect who I am as a person. It doesn't affect who I am as a parent. And a lot of parents get caught in that fear mm -hmm. of, oh gosh, what if my, my kid makes a mistake or what if they blow it or what if they don't, you know, get that scholarship to that good college or what if, what if, you know, I, and you know, then, then what are people going to think of me? What about me? What about me? What about me? <laughs> I, I have my own journey. My daughter, Gia, we just had breakfast with her this morning. That girl is doing awesome on her own adulting, living in her own apartment near the college. <laughs> You know, she's at UT Austin and she's talking already about setting up in the future her own um, ad agency. Wow. 
this girl is 20. Where did she get? She goes, yeah, so mom, now I need to invest, invest in photography equipment so that I can do many, many uh, sessions of doing food products and, you know, actual live shots because people don't do that anymore. They do digital. Mm -hmm. goes, so she wants to do live, cam like a rip with a real camera. I go, yeah, let's invest in your equipment. That's, that's, is that the next step in your journey? Yes, this is, I believe this is the next step because I want to do branding. So it's great to have those conversations now with her and then reflect back when she was eight, when I was a totally different kind of parent. I, you know, I had to get help with kind of my emotional health, uh, mental health at the time. And my husband wasn't doing well, like, like health wise. So there's a lot of challenges as a mom, a wife, uh, a worker bee, you know, I still had to work my full time job while navigating the waters of a family, a marriage, and, and being able to have self care for myself, because that is so ignored mm -hmm. as parents. And we forget that if, if I'm not filling myself up, how am I, that's how we burn out as parents. Mm -hmm. And then we just check out and guess what we do? Put the kid in front of the TV. I am not judging. This is a no judgment zone, but that is a result of not taking care of ourselves. Then we kind of like, there's no energy left for the children when I come home from work. So just stick them in front of the TV, go, you know, you got your homework. You'll go talk to your dad. I don't have time. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and that's just reality. It, that's just, just the reality of, of having to have different roles all at the same time as a mom. Like I'm spe spe specifically talking about women, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't, you don't know that this is coming as far as adding more hats after you get married, you're like, okay, I got, you know, okay, the marriage thing. Okay, great. Let's take a couple of years. Let's figure this thing out. And then the kids start coming. <laughs> and then we're like, oh my gosh, how you're looking at this little being and going, how there is no textbook for this. I don't see any scripts. I don't see instruction manual, <laughs> except for that one book I got, but it was okay. It wasn't like, comprehensive is like what to do when you're having a child, child. yeah you're expecting a child yeah. <laughs> i think we all yeah. read that i think i think i got five copies as like <laughs> as gifts because my my girlfriends knew sister needed help because <laughs> i was single to almost 30 years old but that doesn't mean i wasn't babysitting all my married friends kids so i i knew how to change a diaper and do homework with them and, and do all that stuff but it's different when you have your own child. Mm -hmm. You're so you're emotionally so tied and connected to them that sometimes you forget where you stop and they begin. Yeah. So I don't know if you found that to be true. You're ra you're raising two daughters, and yeah, one is 24, but you're still raising them even when they're out of the house. I just realized that. Yeah, it's like last night it was like we have a break, and then Chelsea called, then Sabrina called, and I thought wow this i guess this never ends then you talk to your grandparents and they're like you know what then it's the grandkids and then you realize i guess it's knowing like you said where you end and they begin and not taking it like your personal responsibility right that you are not responsible for their happiness you're not responsible yeah. to fix their problems but how did you um I, I love how you and your daughter have that code when she needs to <laughs> hear that <laughs> yes okay so uh when when my daughter started having boyfriends in in high school and she didn't know how to navigate those waters too well you know the the feelings and you know and then and then the breakup the breakup feelings where you felt re she felt rejected she felt sad she um she thought maybe you know she didn't think anything was wrong with her she's a very confident young woman but just having those feelings for the first time and then she said mom i gotta talk to you and i'm like yeah okay let's talk and i'm cooking this. i'm cooking this. <laughs> I'm, do I'm doing what a mom does i do like five different things at the same time um and cooking the rice this that. and she's <clears throat> she goes but <clears throat> mom 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 and she does this she does the the three level mom yeah we've all had that mom mom, mom, mom. mom. And you said, yeah so when you told me Chelsea did I'm like, oh, that's just like my daughter. Yeah, then you as soon as you hear that, you're like, oh no, I guess I have okay. to totally. Because it's the like, mom, mom, mom. The and first, I, yeah, okay. that that you know it's serious. 
I have to turn off the turn off the stove, <laughs> put the chair on the side, and go. What's going on? She goes, Mom, we have to talk. And I go, Okay. She goes, but she goes, but Dad's around, so let's just go to the store. And I go, Okay. So when Dad, so when Dad comes down, just say, You know, we got to go to the store. We need we need to go pick up something. And and so that started the code. So from from the <laughs> from then on, she come in. And she goes. She didn't have to do the mom 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 thing. She just said, <laughs> Mom, let's uh. Let's not go to the store and go, go, go. I need to get a couple of things. That was it. That was the code. <laughs> wow. That meant- Uh-oh, Alexis, you're, you're frozen. Can you, are you there? Oh, we are having, oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm okay, just you, you, you froze for a little bit. So oh, I love okay. that code. And I think parents, um, sometimes you don't know, right? how to talk to them, when to talk to them. But I love how you designate a time when, especially daughters, they don't want their fathers to know certain things. No. (laughs) And it's okay. Yeah, Yeah, it's okay. (laughs) No, I don't know if your husband did this, but my husband will will go, so, so she okay? Like, you know, because he can pick up, pick up. They do, they do. Uh, and, And so I go, no, 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 she's fine. We have to go talk about, some some relational stuff you know you know girly girly stuff and he goes so so tell me and i go no i'm not gonna tell you (laughs) (laughs) no no i said if you want to find out stuff and she's open to telling you then go ask her right yeah you guys can have your own conversation because they do have their own relationship, like separate from me and her. We, we totally do and talk about different things. Mm-hmm. She can talk politics. She can talk um, like, uh, the, like history with the dad. That's their thing. I don't even, I walk in the room, they're talking to that. I turn around and walk out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not my thing, you know? <laughs> right, now, if you're right. watching a movie, I'm like, oh, I'm sitting down watching a movie. You guys watch it. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I'll, I know this one. This is good. Um, but yeah, to just, again, to even have a, a, your own personal relationship with each parent is really good. If you have two parents in the house, we were blessed. I was blessed to be raised with two parents, but not every household is. And so to even navigate the waters as a single mom, yeah. I, I, I had several friends where I helped them with their kids and they appreciated so much that that I would just come and sit there and help them with their homework, have help them fold the clothes and get wow. the chores done the mom, while the mom is just trying to cook a meal and trying to have a minute. You need, I said, you need five more minutes. She goes, yeah, can I just sit here? Yeah, just sit there. You want, go read your Bible, go pray, go, go take a walk. I'll take care of the kids. I'll be fine. Wow. You're, 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 you're we fine. all need an Alexis in our life. <laughs> Girl, I, had to spread, I spread myself thin. Every weekend, I would find a married couple and have them go on their dates. Wow. And, um, because I, I always believe that marriage relationship is so important, even yeah. as a single person, because I saw my parents um, you're together till my dad passed away. And, um, and I cannot, you don't take that for granted. So, you know, kind of like paying it forward. Yeah. And just, say, hey, I would love for somebody to do this for me one day when I'm married. So why don't I help the marry my married friends out? Because a lot of them hadn't been going on dates for years. And I'm like, how do you keep the marriage relationship going? Exactly. Well, that's, that's why when you said it takes a village, I think sometimes we are reluctant to ask for help because we don't want to um, intrude. We don't want to, you know, right. It's, it's just that, that whole, like, mm, I don't want to ask, but I think, don't you find that, um, I mean, you were willing to, I think a lot of people who are single, they love kids, right? Mm -hmm. Especially like grandmas who maybe their grandkids are out of state or now it might be a little different because of the whole COVID, but, but um, I think it's still through Zoom. I've heard of um, my, my daughter, Sabrina's in California, and she just had a Facebook Messenger, like video chat with my mom, you know, saying good night to her. Oh, and it was, it was hard because um, I guess my mom, very, very rarely she lucid, but she actually had a conversation. She said, you need to hurry up and come home and visit me. And we thought she hasn't been very lucid in, in months. So it, I think it was hard, but you know, with Zoom and with um, Face, what is it? FaceTime. I mean, you know, it just really, I think parents, 
do you think they can utilize that to connect with um, nieces, nephews? I mean, what do you think? Oh yeah, I, I've seen lot. I've seen a lot of families utilizing uh, those uh, virtual platforms and having dinner together. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like, and then even having several families throughout the United States all sinking their time to have dinner together like even even regularly once a week because they can't travel anymore they can't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they can't just jump on the plane and 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 do their usual tra like traditional we go to grandma's house for for this so you cook all the food and you put the camera or the laptop right at the beginning at the front of the table and I thought that was the best idea yeah, I've ever yeah. heard. Because that's the next best thing to being there because you can hear the conversations all going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And then you can jump on somebody else's conversation, like, you know, all the way in, you know, Rhode Island or for Virginia or Colorado, you know, if you have family all over the place. And a lot of Hawaii families uh, even have, have, that ex have families all over. We have family all over the map. Like, Literally, I hear my mom, but she likes calling. She don't, my mom's 74. She don't like this stuff. The, the, she doesn't like seeing. But I have taught her how to use Zoom. So I may level her up to start doing this with the family. And, and maybe do and, something fun where she shows her food. That way the focus, it is weird seeing yourself. Yeah. That's why I, I heard that the reason why Zoom calls are so much more stressful is that you see yourself and you have to make sure that you have, it's not like a go in the office, go in the classroom. Now you have to, like my backdrop, you don't know how many times fell or like you oh, hear no. uh, my dog's barking. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think Dex had like chickens crowing. So when she does her oh my gosh. I did hear, I thought I was hearing things when I heard the chickens. The chickens, yeah. She's like, yeah, I just have like 20 chickens um, outside and everyone I'm sure in, in the UK and Australia, they're like chickens, okay? <laughs> That's what you call keeping it real. So, Keeping you know. it real. Yes. So how do you think as moms, can we keep it real with kids and not lose our sanity? Well, you know, I think you just have to, as as a mom, I really have to check myself all the time. And I really have to just put in that energy and make a decision that even this morning, I kind of had to prep myself for that breakfast time with my daughter because we're so much alike. And, and, and she has this, almost the same kind of quirk. She doesn't like to be interrupted when she's talking. And I can see her kind of her, her like her getting frustrated. So I really have to just like like put the zipper on the lip and just go mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and just keep putting food in my mouth so that I don't <laughs> I don't talk. Good thing it was a breakfast. Um and um yeah, and then just let and when you and it's it's amazing. She kind of tests the waters and then once she knows we're not going to interrupt her, all she can flow with her her dreams and what she's thinking about and this is what I'm going to do for school. I'm not, I'm not going to do it all at, at the, and she's, I can, I can almost see it in her brain, how she processes, how she's living her life, like how she, how she wants her life to be. And she's always looking for the loopholes of getting her time back because she wants to do other things. So in her, in order for her to do that, she does her research she kind of, she talks to different counselors. She goes, can I do this? Can I, can I like switch this and go to East, like a local community college and take that class, you know? And she goes, you know, mom, going to community college is so much easier than UT. And I'm um, oh, sorry if any UT people out there, but it's a university level classes versus a community college. Class. Well, plus the price too, right? I think um, yeah. Sabrina, when she took a year off uh, in California, she mm -hmm. went to LCC that one year, you save like 30 grand. And then when you go back, I think she mm -hmm. went back for a junior senior year, but that one year she realized you can take like BYU online, you can go to Leeward mm -hmm. and it worked mm -hmm. out because my dad had passed while she was here, but she was able mm -hmm. to go and yeah. visit and have lunch and take naps. And I look back mm -hmm. and I think, you know, a lot of local people always say, well, if you come back, uh, she's not going to go back. But I think every child, right, depending on their dreams and I think they're fearing judgment right? She said, mom, I think there was a teacher, she graduated from Kamehameha, and one of the teachers said, oh, you're at Leeward? 
oh. oh. And she felt so <laughs> judged. Wow. And she goes, oh, but I plan to go to California. They're like, really? Oh. And you can tell that, yeah, yeah. it was very, very... Oh. And it's hard to feel judged, but I think as kids, don't you think sometimes when they share, they like pause and they're waiting for the judgment? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, and if they're expecting it because it's the pattern. Yeah, yeah. That's the pattern. And they notice these kids are smart. They know the patterns with like different kinds of adults, like teachers, instructors versus maybe parents or aunts and uncles you know, can, they can probably get away with it with, with certain people, but right. you know, they're going, they're going to enter the judgment, the judgment zone with other adults. So they own, they, you can, you can hear them or feel them bracing. Right. Yes. Yes. And I, and my daughter is the same way, but it's just like, she don't care. She's really unique. I don't know where she got that from because I'm a people pleaser at heart. Like I have to. You know what? The, and that's how Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea yeah. sounds like your daughter. Yeah, not a people pleaser. Yeah. And then yeah, but I think if you are a people pleaser, Sabrina is starting to realize not to be a people pleaser. I always tell them if you if I don't like it, don't listen to. You don't need my approval, which is really hard. Go yes, for it, even job. though I don't like it. Go for it, even though because you're not here to please me. Right. Okay. And after I'm gone, then what? Who do you please yeah. next? It's going to be a habit of pleasing people in order to find your, your self-worth or, right? In relation Absolutely. in the business world. So I think it's hard because we want the approval. We want, I think that's why, I don't know how you were in school, but it's like we want the A's because it shows that we're worthy. <laughs> yeah, you got the extra credit done. I know I'm getting a 98, yeah. but just in case. I'm going to do the extra credit. I'm going to, yeah. And then you look back and you think, I, my regret is I didn't play more. You know, other people's regret is they didn't study more. But in any event, we all turned out okay. I mean, people who, <laughs> yeah. who dropped out of school are now like CEOs or people who, right. you know, it's like it has nothing. I'm all for education, but it is not a guarantee for life success. You know? No, I agree. I, I totally agree. And um, I actually tried, we actually tried to get my daughter to not go to college and go to this program called, uh, it's an internship praxis for two years and they stick you with a startup company. Wow. And you, yeah, they stick you with a startup, if, but you have to jump through the hoops, do the interview. Um, you have to, you have to interview well and you have to know what you want, um, like your specific field. So say you want to be CEO. You want to do, or you want to be a marketing uh, vice president, or you want to whatever. You so you go in with that, and then they do your assessment, and then they will they will have you like shadow, and they actually put you to work in the startup, and and they have weekly sessions with the practice people to monitor how they're doing for the two years, and it's and it's like you you pay this money up front. And they and then they pay the kid. Is that praxis related to the praxis test? The praxis? Um... No, no. I think it's just a praxis internship. Oh. Yeah. Wow. But you see, that's why there's so many alternatives now. Before it, it was just you need to you know in order to get to college you need to get the scholarship and then you need to go to college. And now we're having Ivy League graduates not finding employment. So yeah. then they're stuck with the two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. I'm not saying that it's a bad route to take, but there are so many different opportunities yeah. and journeys. But I think our mentality a lot of times because our generation is you go get your four-year degree and possibly a master's. You make sure that, uh, I think one of my friends said it's her meal ticket. She told her daughter, it's that your meal ticket. So her daughter um, was in the Coast Guard and then went to college and graduated in her 30s. But I think some of us have that Right. I mean, I, I'm still for, I think it, it's, it's never uh, a waste, right? A college degree is never a waste, but it's not the, the only way. So I always use my, my husband, you know, sales engineer at Spectrum, no uh, college education that it, but you have really? to be a really hard, awesome. hard worker. Yeah. And you have to, I mean, it's probably harder sometimes, but if you have it in you and sometimes even with the college degree, you still have to prove it because you have the degree, but then you have to show that you have what it takes to, you know. So I think as a mom, though, that's interesting that age 40, what made you at age 40 decide to get your, um, your bachelor's? 
Um, well, I had made, it's an, it was an integrity thing. I made a promise to my, to my mom and to myself that I would go back. And as I was getting older, I thought, and it's, it's funny, I have these, like, even at age 30, I don't know if it's the, it's the decade thing, but whenever I hit the 20, then I hit the 30, then I wanted to do some, and then I hit the 40. I'm like, huh, okay, not that time is running out, <laughs> but um, my energy level. Because I already had, I already had my two kids. Mm -hmm. My son was, let's see, I had him when I was 37. So he was like going to turn three maybe or was wow. three. And, and I remember when my daughter turned two, my husband went back and got his master's degree. So uh, maybe that triggered, it's like, okay, so, you know, the kids are younger and I have a spouse and he's not he's just working full time. He can support me just like how I supported him with Gia, my oldest one, when she was two, I would take her out of the house almost the whole day. And we go holo holo all over the wow. island we go, have to do going to the park, going to the beach, going to little festivals and the little whale fist festival here. And you know, whatever carnival there was go to my friend's house. They can, she can play with other kids. And I did that every weekend so that he would have the whole Saturday to study pretty much himself. Yes. And that's how he, we worked as a team for him to get that master's degree. And it was tough. It was really tough because he'd be in that room and my daughter be knocking on the door. Yeah. Like, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy, you know, and, 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 and I go, baby, you don't bother dad right now. He'll come out when, when it's time to say good night. Okay. You know, so she sacrificed too. <laughs> I mean, we all had to sacrifice. So then I thought, okay, it's my turn. Because we, we, we agreed that we wouldn't be in school at the same time. Like, so you, master's and I got to help out. If I go back from a bachelor's, he helps out. So, you know, he was good for it. And, and wow. it, was, it was great. It took me five years because I was working full time. And um, I, had plant, I had helped plant a church on Maui at the time. So I was very involved with my church family. And then um, with work, you know, with, just raising two kids, you know, so I'd start, I think I would start after dinner, like studying at eight o'clock at night and go to like midnight. And then I'd work, wake up again at like four in the morning and then wow. study and then get ready, ready for work. And then at my lunch break, I would read, um, did that for five years and passed. I mean, all I needed to do was pass, you know? Yeah. I was going to try, I was trying for the A. I tried to go for it because the overachiever in me, <laughs> I burnt out real quick. And then I started doing like all A's and maybe a couple of B's and I had one C. So I'm still proud of myself because, you know, it was. When I think raising kids, I was pregnant midway through my teaching certification. So I went Ooh. from, I need the A to nine months pregnant. I need to take my exam. <laughs> I'm a three week old baby. The professor came to my house and I thought, you know what? I really don't care right now. I had like zero <laughs> sleep. Sabrina's on the little... <laughs> the little blanket and I just said oh. all I need is B to pass but in my head you know you're like you need the A you need the A but when you're tired you don't really care you're like okay I'm gonna just do mm -hmm. this and it's okay you know the C is okay. okay and I think that's what we need to teach our kids if, you know if, if they don't get the A it's not like oh you got the college degree but wait a minute you had a 2.75 or you had a 3.0 it's not like you're gonna lose a job based no. on your GPA right? Your no. degree is your degree. But I think we, I think you and I have probably that, right? That high achiever where we want that mm -hmm. extra credit. We want that. Yes. But so now it's like our turn to teach our kids. Yes, it's good to have goals and achieve, but not to um, maybe, I don't know, affect our mental health. You know, when my I daughter started you throwing up. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. sacrifice yourself for, for that. Well, mm -hmm. I love your self care. I mean, how I, I Wow, I can't believe. Wow, we've been talking for 40 minutes. So, oh, we're supposed to only go 30 minutes. Okay, you know what? I love, I think we'll end with your self care tip that you think moms would benefit the most. I know it, it varies, but what do you think helped you the most during, um, you know, your like insanity times when you're balancing so many things? Um, I think even self care is even just waking up before everybody wakes up. And I was doing that anyway, but to, before I would study, I would, you know, some people like to meditate, some people like to pray. 
And sometimes you just need to sit still and try and push everything out of your mind and just kind of clear it, have a clean slate, like especially when you start your day um, and you control that time. Yeah. Because that, that's when you can control what's going on before everybody wakes up. Now, if the baby wakes up at three in the morning, I'm sorry, I can't help you. But, <laughs> um, but, you know, but find another time. If the baby goes to sleep, you adjust your schedule. Yeah. To the baby, right? To the to the children, and you you get them on the schedule. Now, if they're supposed to be in bed by eight o'clock, because you gotta go study and you need your your time, you need an hour for mama time. You gotta put that on the calendar. Yes. You gotta hard enter that and get the buy in from the whole family. Have that family conversation. Mama needs time every night from this time in and out. If you need help with homework, that's something else. If you have a project to do, that's something else. But for the most part. I would like our schedule to look like this. Now, how can I help? No, not everybody needs to buy in and, and help with the schedule. Like, what do you need, Johnny? What do you need, Sarah? And then you go, honey, what do you need? Make sure the husband is in there too because he needs <laughs> exactly. his time too. So don't forget the dad now. <laughs> um, so, but everybody can buy into like how they want to schedule the week and then family time, you know, so that the kids don't think that, you know, you don't want to be with them. So we always had family time on Friday nights and we'd mix it up. We'd go throw on our sneakers and go walking or if the kids are old enough, take them go walking, you know? Then you take a, a lavender bath after that, throw oh them in the God. bed and it's, it's over. They're done for the night. So exactly. You know, and then you get your exercise at the same time, right? So if you can double up on, on moving around with the kids, then you you can check that off your self care list. Okay, I got I got my I got my twenty minutes of just like moving around, walking around, running around with kicking the ball with the kids at the park, or just going walking around the block, you know, or something. And I do that all the time. So I listen, like I love listening to podcasts, and I love watching my Netflix. You know, yeah. our Netflix. Yeah, right? my Netflix. Yeah. Guess what? I cannot watch my Netflix unless I'm on the elliptical. Bam. Wow. Bam. Mm -mm, that's mine right now. <laughs> so you like double up. I double, triple dip when I can because time is so precious and I want to get all these things done, but it's not efficient enough for me. Yeah. Um, and then if I really want downtime where I don't want anything, I like I'm done with my Netflix. I'm done. I'm just done with the whole day. I'm, I put my phone down, turn it off. Then nothing before I go to bed. See, and I think that's what we need. Don't you think we need more yeah. nothing? Because I think put the tech away. Put the tech yeah, away. Yeah, but I think we think um, I'm gonna just do Netflix before I go to bed. I'm gonna do some listening, uh, whatever music. But nothing is nothing. something that none of us really were taught to incorporate because we were taught you got to do, you got to do, you got to do, and then you know you have to fit in your fill in the blank. But now uh -huh. um, that was my actually parenting tip. Tomorrow is just doing nothing and that that meditation. If you teach really yeah. young kids to really not believe their thoughts and really mm -hmm. have that nothingness because right now, like people are buying into the fear of like, Oh my gosh, what if my, my house blows away? What if, um, and you just put mm -hmm. every worst case scenario in your head and then you go crazy because you're only focusing on the negative scenarios instead of like what you said, you know, it's going to be okay. Right. Yeah. We're, we're going to, um, right. We survived Iniki. <laughs> we survived Eva and we're going to, get through Douglas and right. You guys have other storms coming up and there will always be either like a mental hurricane. I think, don't you think inside mm -hmm. we have our own mental hurricane mm -hmm. and then we have the COVID thing and then we have a physical hurricane and we are going to crash and burn if we don't, like you said, take five minutes of, because when everyone's going to be asleep at one point, right? Your kids are going to go to sleep. One your husband's going to go to sleep. <laughs> My pets are asleep. And then you think, you know, I'm going to sacrifice Netflix and I will have like 10 minutes of quietude. And then oftentimes you, you fall asleep, but, but yeah. that first one minute you think, Oh, I don't have time for this. Right. Yes. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. You could be doing laundry. You could be doing like prepping for cooking. You could be, and then you think, Nope, I am going to just have, I think maybe that's the tip incorporate nothing time. Yes. And you have to put it on your calendar. Yes. So that's how you protect and block the time. Like anything else that's important in your life, 
time block. You know, yeah, you gotta, you have to part enter it in your Google Calendar or or something, whatever yeah. calendar you use. Put an alarm like every night at the same time every night. You know, have the alarm go off and have a label on it. As yeah. simple as using your 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 clock in your phone to say, okay, it's my it's, time exactly. My time, quiet five five minute quiet time. Five minute, nothing time, whatever. Just put put something in there to remind you. It's like, oh yeah, even like a even a five minute buffer that I'm gonna have my five minutes of exactly, nothing. Exactly, because sometimes you have to transition. So yeah, yes. you that. So don't forget the transition time. So that's my tip. That's my tip for for busy, busy, and we're all busy, busy parents, busy working, busy lives. Um, but you cannot be too busy to take care of yourself because if you care about others and you care about your family, you have to take you have to take care of yourself first. Or maybe not first, along with everything else. You got to be right, right, right. Um, And that you don't have to be first, but you can be, you, you can be just as important as everybody else. In it, right? Yeah. See, that's the thing with moms. I think we're last because we need to make sure that everyone gets their thing. And then we put ourselves last. And that's why Sabrina, one of her message cards and my mom has got to let go book is that you deserve like not the broken pancake. <laughs> you deserve like the... <laughs> Like the, you know, you know how you do that. She says, "Mom, you deserve like you take that first piece." But as moms, you're like, "Okay, no, I'll get the, oh, the crust broke. I'll have this piece, and then you have everyone do get the nice pieces." And that made me cry because I was like, "Oh my gosh!" But so, it, that's hard though, because you want you want the broken piece because everyone else, right? As a yeah. mom, like I can't give you a broken piece. So now <laughs> I've taught myself, you get. <laughs> You can get the best. It's a good pancake. piece. In fact, I'll take extra yes. crust, and then That's you right. have the broken piece. <laughs> right, right. Or everybody can take turns getting the broken one. Okay? Exactly. Yeah, we take turns. Take well, thank turns. you. This was fun. It was like talking story. Yeah. Right. That's what we do, Karen. That's, That's what, we, what do. we do. So no matter if you're in Texas and I'm, you know, Doesn't in Hurricane matter. Island Day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, doesn't no. matter though guess what the internet was fine we had no storm and so this was just the right time so thank Yay. you so much to give us your time thank on a busy saturday all right because thank it is what yes yeah, almost oh it's almost well it's, it's not quite bedtime but it's nighttime for you yeah and then um i think this was my last appointment of the day it was a busy afternoon i had to kind of fit fit everybody in wow. there wow but you know made it happen i was Thank able to you. Get here and now i can go get my dessert <laughs> yay get the good piece the best piece <laughs> the best piece not the broken piece <laughs> yeah yeah okay um, thanks thanks bye, bye.